Point four. Practice personhood. Back in point one about not buying the message of the commercial media, we pointed out, and I'd like to emphasize it here, that consuming material goods does not make us happy, even though advertisers try to convince us that it does. But as I was quoting from Sri Ramana Maharshi, there is no happiness in any object of the world, was how he put it. So if consuming physical objects doesn't make us happy, what does? Well, it turns out that what really is fulfilling for human beings is connectedness, it's relationships. And this can even be described on the level of health. It's been shown that people who enter, let's say, a uh, facility for rehabilitation, who have a lot of friends and community around them, will get better much faster than loners. There was a little town in Italy which was studied by uh, actuarial statistics um, for insurance companies because people in that town were not getting heart disease like the rest of the country. And they thought, oh, they must have this great diet. Well, it turned out they had terrible diet. There was all this greasy stuff. But the whole town had been settled by Italians, and it was like one big family there. There was one baby who was born in this little town that someone counted they were kissed by 248 people by the end of the second day of its life. So uh, getting together at a deep level with people, cultivating relationships of service and help with them is a powerful way for us to overcome the powerlessness and depression that we feel. And it's a perfect example of what we like to call here at Meta a stealth mechanism. In other words, it's something that you can do which is not going to irritate the opposition. They won't recognize it as a threat, yet it builds up to a very serious counterpoise against the prevailing system, which is always trying to alienate and isolate us. We were just having a conversation here this morning where people pointed out that tyrants tremble when people dance in the street. Well, whether they think about it or not, or whether they're classical old-fashioned tyrants or not, there is a drive in our modern civilization, I would say, close to the core of our modern civilization, to isolate us. We use technology to keep ourselves apart from one another. I'm old enough to remember the days when you'd get into a gas station, you would drive in, well, first of all, gas would be like 48 cents a gallon, and you would talk to a station attendant and say, you know, fill her up and give me this, and where's, where's your air and water, and hey, how's the kids? But now, of course, you just stick a piece of plastic in a machine and drive away without talking to anyone. This is one of several hundred examples. So if you've been following points one through three, you are in a superb position to strike up deeper and closer relationships with other people to even build community in your neighborhoods or in your place of work. And this is a very powerful way to start creating the networks that we're going to need when the action really gets intense in this shift uh, to a new paradigm, something which uh, in itself we'll be talking about pretty soon. So instead of <coughs> emailing a person, if you have a chance, call them. Instead of calling a person, go and sit and talk with them. Yeah, there will be problems, there will be difficulties, but remember what we said when we were talking about getting rid of the television, getting it out of our household, uh, out of uh, not being the focus of our family. Once we get together with people and work out our disagreements with them, we will be in a much closer place. We will feel much more deeply connected with the rest of humanity we ourselves will be much less of a contributor to the alienation and violence. And by the way, alienation and violence are just two sides of the same coin. And in addition, as I say, we'll be building up the networks of support that we need that will help us when the going really gets tough. So for all of those reasons, we say practice the, the principle on which this whole shift is based, namely the primacy of the human individual. That does definitely does not mean the primacy of the isolated individual. Remember, we were saying that tank man standing in front of a column of tanks all by himself is a powerful evocative image. But the really powerful human being is she or he who is deeply aware 
of her, his interconnectedness with other human beings and can influence them on that very deep level. So there'll be thousands of creative ways that you'll be able to think of to make your life more personal without invoking more conflict than is necessary. And this kind of expansion will not only make you healthier and happier, but it has direct political significance of exactly the kind that we need. Thank you.